Tell me, when people ask, you know, what makes Don Julio Don Julio? Well, uh, I suppose that mainly is what Don Julio did, Don Julio Gonzalez did in, at the beginning, was to find the perfect way to do the things. We planted with a different way, we select by hand the agave, we let that the, old, the agave were to the real right. And each step we try to make it, as Don Julio did it a long time ago. And that's what Don Julio, Don Julio is, the tequila. Don Julio tequila is what it is. The real secret is that we make everything perfect. We go for the best things and the best procedures that Don Julio created. And that is what it is. At the end, he found great aromas and great flavors, and our challenge is to maintain it. But when you think about the flavor profile of Don Julio, what's, and, you, and you're tasting something, what keys you into it's Don Julio versus it's not Don Julio? Don Julio as is a tequila that is in Dos Altos, the first flavors and profiles are sweet and going for the sweetness. Coming now from the Blanco, what we do in a special way that is we are a very smooth Blanco. Of course, the rest of the flavors and all the rest of the tequilas is following that tendency. You know, we are sweet, we are uh, fruity, we are a lot of honeys. The one that the key that Don Julio made was the Reposado. That was the original one. Of course, before to have a Reposado, you must have Blanco because the one that you produce in the installation is blank always. But Don Julio put it into the barrels and then make for first time the Reposado. Añejo Claro, this is the first Añejo yeah, Claro? of course. And, you know, what was the thinking behind it? When you go aging and aging and more aging, you start to losing that characteristic of the Blanco. Of course, you obtain a great product when it's aged, but you lost that first entrance on the Blanco. And then what we did was to work in in to remove some flavors and aromas and let it with the final characteristic of the añejo because it's quite smooth, real sweet, but we return some of the characteristics of the blanco. That combination is what is what we found it. How old is too old for tequila? We have trained those Julios of six, seven years, and really we don't like it, that really part as and now we're we're telling the way that we are doing already, you know. But we don't know if uh, seven or eight years with another barrel, or whatever, is going to be better or not. Uh, but I tried even another brands that left their product for gold over seven years. And I can tell you that I, I didn't find any tequila that is good after seven years. Which expression best express your, you know, your sensibilities as a distiller? Really all the Don Julio's. Uh, I, I love to drink Añejo on the rocks for me. And that's what really maybe can be my parameter always. No, if I am drinking an Añejo for me is Blanco and Añejo for me give me all the, the ideas that I can have for the future in, in, in our brand, for us, all the, all the people that we work in Don Julio is a special uh, feeling inside to, to be responsible and work for the, for the number one tequila ultra premium in Mexico. Uh, we are recognizing for that. Now you are in, Mex in Mexico, you can ask about that. It's, it's not because we say that it is, but we are recognized and the numbers also said that we are the, the number one in Mexico. And that proudness and that com compromise is what that really inspire us than more than a glass of tequila. No? But are you surprised at how many tequilas are on the market now? I mean, <laughs> Mexico registered officially 2,000 and overseas 400 more. Wow, there's too much more. Too much. What does mezcal do for you? What are, you, what are your thoughts on mezcal and and does? Does a company like Don Julio get involved? No, because we are so different the way Don Julio created a tequila. And I don't believe that we can go in that way, going with the, with the mezcals. It's a category that is growing very, very fast and very, very good. We are um, more than proud to say that it's another Mexican product that put our name in the world. And it's enough market for really to compete with another categories and other spirits are has more market that we have the tequila and the mezcal together uh, well it's, we're proud to, to have another mexican good stuff competing around the, the spirit world now you take your tequila different than i have seen a lot of people do it with lemon rind or lime rind blanco and then tonic yeah how did that come about mm. again i was a uh, uh, I like I like those flavors and and think it really was thinking about that. Not say why do you put, put lime when you produce when you make 
typical gin and tonic or vodka tonic. All what you do, ice, the spirit, tonic, and at the end it's a twist, no? like a garnish, and then you have that little smell of lime because you have it at the top of the... And then I started to think, it. okay, I, I want the lime flavor, and then I put that. First the lime, the twist, and then only the, the tequila without ice and without and let it there for one two minutes and with the whole strength of the tequila dissolve the flavors and aroma of the limes and then have a, po a powerful flavor in, in that way of limes. Do you think it's a way of looking at tequila differently than you know tequila has been placed tequila always seems to be placed with you know lime juice or you know shaken up in a margarita or with you know in a paloma uh, and do you think do you think there's a spot for tequila in the more kind of a more sophisticated yes, drink? Yes. I agree with that. I'm more than pretty sure that is there. In many events that we are having in the United States and even around the world, even the whole mixology world is growing and growing all the time. And well, the tequila has that, that beautiful thing that doesn't have the other uh, spirit that we have at the Blanco and Reposado and Añejo, you know, many of them, a big range in one spirit. Any other one has it. No? Now there you can find some whiskey that start to be a white whiskey. <laughs> okay, because trying to compete with that, with the white spirits. And we have from the beginning of the mixing uh, compound as, a, as Blanco, going to the extra ages that you can compare with the cognacs and brandy and single malts. And I'm very pretty enjoying what the people is doing mixing our product because they're amazing cocktails already. And then I more than support that be happy in the you know the world-class competition of the Ayers around the world it's an amazing stuff what I have drink it already and then I'm, I'm part of that world already <laughs> as you're planting the crops for that'll come seven years from now um, how do you how, you know there's there's been such a change in the tequila consumption there's such you know tequila's so much in fashion seven years from now how do you know how do you plan for that how do you figure uh, guessing, <laughs> sometimes guessing, challenging and preventing of course sales, a lot of uh, sales projections and waiting of course that growth of the market and growth of the sales and then we're each year we suffer really to calculate and estimate what's going on but each year we're planting more and more than the last years. And, and what do you what do you see seven years out? What do you think? Maybe the double of our production. That's what we are expecting. So really, on that on that dramatic of a curve, that in seven years you could be making twice as much tequila. Yeah. Wow. And do you think that'll be in the Blanco, or do you think that that's going to be across the, the Rhine? It's again quite difficult, difficult to say it. Uh, Mexico is very strong in reposados and growing the reposado. And uh, United States is very very strong in blancos. Uh, Mexico wasn't a, a very good for añejos, and now with the seventy, the seventy in Mexico has been a superb. Uh, launch uh, is the growest uh, uh, brand that has been in the last two years in all the tequila world. Uh, here in Mexico, 70 is an amazing good product. And then we have we are preventing more for the añejos and that kind of things. And then it's one of the the tough parts to do of the job to estimate what we are going to have in the future. The crystal ball. Yeah, very <laughs> tough.